So I thought I'd give you a shot of the um, of the setup as I have it at the moment. I've uh, put the little clock or dial test indicator against this part of the mandrel, which I know to be relatively true. The next stage, of course, would be for me to indicate against the um, the flat faces, uh, each each one in turn. I know that those faces are absolutely square and true to each other. Um, as an aside, I've, I've put brass packing uh, to protect the the workpiece from the jaws of the of the uh, of the chuck. And while I was setting it up, I uh, I kind of glued them in place with uh, some dyed beeswax uh, furniture polish, and uh, just just to stick them in place while I, while I was mounting the thing uh, before I, before I got the workpiece in place, just just to hold them there lightly. And they smell beautiful, but the only problem is when they fall down into the um, bottom of the machine they pick up all kinds of crud and uh, sticks beautifully to that as well. Anyway, I'll indicate against these faces next but at the moment as I turn this around you can see okay, it's bouncing around a lot because this isn't a very smooth surface it's comparatively smooth but and I'm, I also haven't clocked it absolutely top dead center so I'm getting a small cosine error in the in the instrument but you can see that I'm reading about well, I would say about 15 microns, which is what much well, it's less than a thousandth of an inch. A thousandth or one thou is about 25 microns, and this is reading 15 microns. So I've clocked it to within less than one thou. Uh, I've also got the workpiece pretty well um, butted up against the face of the chuck hole, except there. So there's de there are definitely going to be errors, but I'm hoping not to have to touch the workpiece itself. I'm hoping to just turn away the sacrificial material here uh, enough that uh, it'll kind of fall away later, or that I could perhaps get at it some other how once I can access the hole again. Anyway, I'm going to try and remount the camera, and uh, see you soon. So here's a view of uh, the job pathway done. I've managed to turn away some. I just grabbed the first pair of pliers I could just to grip this ring off there because uh, I'd, I'd uh, parted it off slightly further away than the neck that uh, you could see in the, in the film earlier. So what I propose to do is just turn a little witness around there, see exactly how deep I can go into the root of these threads because clearly the root of these threads will be um, at a smaller diameter than the crest of the mating threads and hopefully that way I will be able to bore that hole just just you know midges away from uh, my previously accurately made workpiece so I shall revisit it shortly right so I've bored away as much as I dare really I hope the light is alright so that you can see enough there if I put the light back on it tends to create a glare Anyway, I think, I think, I hope, that I've left little enough material for me to be able to just prise this away. It's not going to be easy for me to do with one hand. I think I might be fooling myself. I'm going to try this with a couple of hands and a different pair of pliers off camera. Success! I, uh, I think I finally cracked it. Um, there's a tiny, tiny bit of damage to one of the threads, um, which you can just about see there, like down in that area there. But I think I can clean that up quite neatly. I never managed to touch any of the crests of these threads. And over here is the, uh, well, whatever solid bits I could recover, I kind of peeled them off like a sardine tin. That's about half the material that was threaded in. The rest I had to turn and they um well they did not want to leave they did not want to part company anyway it's job done now i have to tackle the other side and here here ended the sermon <laughs>